I um, have the really great pleasure of introducing you to our second presenter. Suzanne McCall is a senior consultant with Pinnacle Group. Suzanne has been guiding, developing, and motivating leaders in a wide variety of industries internationally, actually, for 25 years. She draws expertise from the world of professional theater to help individuals achieve greater results through heightened awareness in areas essential to business success, such as physical presence, emotional understanding, and creative expression. Suzanne inspires others by coaching and training, by helping her clients to look past their limitations, to fearlessly implement strategic plans, and attain outcomes that benefit the individual, their team, and the organization as a whole. Suzanne, we welcome you to the dais to um, share your focus with us, which is negotiation in action. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everybody. <laughs> it's so good to be here with you. I thought we'd start by catching up. Love to find out what you've been up to in the last week or so. So let's go. Well, first of all, I'd like to know how many of you have had conversations about deadlines? So maybe extending a deadline, where you had to extend a deadline, or somebody asked you to extend a deadline. Anybody? The old deadline thing. OK, great. Anybody have a conversation with a colleague about sharing the load on a task or a project? OK, lots of hands going up here. All right, next category, pricing, where you had to ask for more money on something or a better price. Anybody? Anybody? This could be at work or at home. Excellent. Anybody have a conversation with a toddler or a teenager <laughs> about anything whatsoever? Anybody? Anybody? OK. The best negotiators in the world, am I right? <laughs> well, congratulations. Just about everybody in the room has been practicing their negotiation skills. So excellent. Good for you. We are going to take what Beverly so beautifully and gracefully gave us and apply it directly to a specific skill area, which is negotiation. And the first thing I want you to do is to identify an opportunity that you have to negotiate. A situation where maybe you need to reach an agreement with another person or group of people in order to move forward to accomplish a task. And if you can think of something meaningful, all the better. This might be something in your personal life. This could be something at work. It could be internal with colleagues or a work group. It could be external with vendors or with a client or customer. But think of an opportunity that you have right now to negotiate. And it could be in any of these categories. It could perhaps be that you have an opportunity for new business or a project, a project that's coming up. It could be a need to gain support from a colleague, somebody that you work with. It could perhaps be a desire to improve in a professional way or a personal way, an improvement, maybe something that Beverly brought up earlier. And you think, that's something I'm going to work on. I'm going to drive toward that. And there might be some negotiation involved. The thing with negotiation, we're doing it more often than we think. So if we think about it in a constructive way, we can get even better at it. You walk in with a lot of expertise today in this area because you're already negotiating a lot. We're hoping to enhance your ability to negotiate because this is how we make things happen. So identify that opportunity. And here's what I'd like for you to do. You have a worksheet that we have a handout that is in your booklet in that left-hand pocket. And the front of it looks like this. Go to the very bottom of that page, and there's an open space there. It says identifying that opportunity to negotiate, a meaningful opportunity. So if you would, go ahead and jot that opportunity down there. So just jot down what it is that is an opportunity for you to negotiate. So take a moment to just do that. Jot it down. Bottom of that handout, the top of the handout says Pinnacle Group. And at the bottom, there's a space for you to write down your opportunity to negotiate. Get specific. What's that situation? All right, while you're jotting that down and some of you are finishing off, 
the uh, writing down what it is that you're negotiating on. Let me tell you why I'm having you get specific. It's because building skill in the abstract is difficult, doesn't usually work. We have to get specific, a specific situation where we want to build that skill. And let me tell you, if you can build a skill in any area and get specific about it and develop it in a specific situation, you own that skill. You can use that anywhere. You can use that enhancement of skill and ability anywhere. So this is why I'm asking you to get specific. All right, so as we think about this, I want us to consider how we approach things. And um, I want us to build some awareness. So we're gonna do a few things here to build awareness around negotiation. And the first thing I wanna look at is your perception of what negotiation is. Because for many of us, we walk into this idea of negotiation with a lot of preconceived notions. So I wonder if you're holding any of these. So let's build some awareness around this. First of all, we might say, someone has to win and I need it to be me. <laughs> so that might be what you're walking in with, with your perception of negotiation. Another one could be, it's a necessary evil. I don't like it. I don't enjoy doing it. I'd rather do just about anything, exploratory surgery, sign me up, but I'd rather not negotiate. But it's a necessary evil and I need it. It's a tool that I need to get there to make things happen. Or perhaps for you, I feel bad pushing my agenda on other people, so I don't usually do that really forcefully or assertively. I hadn't talked to Beverly first and gotten that confidence built up. <laughs> Afraid to assert my agenda, so I usually don't. And in a negotiation, usually I just do what is needed to be done. I let the other person take over. So maybe that's it. Maybe that's a perception that you have. Or another one, and this is a more healthy, I think a more productive approach to this. It is a way to find creative solutions and multifaceted wins. This is another way of looking at it. So this is another perception of it. It's an opportunity to be creative. It's an opportunity for us to have multifaceted wins, not just me winning, but many people winning. So this is perception. I want to offer to you a, a definition of what this is, of what, what perhaps, how we can think about negotiation. And this comes from the author of a book called Enlightened Negotiation. Great book, I would definitely recommend it. It's about a, a new, more evolved way of approaching negotiations. Some good examples in there and some good how-tos in that book. So this is from Maharad Nazarhi, and here's what he says. Negotiation is an expedition through a landscape of human interaction to discover potential meeting places where we can come together in harmony. If you haven't thought about it in that way, I think that opens up to newer possibilities around negotiation. So first of all, it's an expedition. It's a journey with a goal, with a destination in mind. The other part of this definition that I really like is it's, it's about that human interaction. It's a whole landscape of human interaction. So when we are negotiating, we probably have different personalities, different communication styles, different approaches. We're bringing in those fears. We're bringing in our gales, right? into this conversation. So there's a lot that's going on underneath. But we're, we're in that landscape. And as we're in that landscape with others, we're seeking to find those meeting places, those places where we can come together to make greater things happen. So it's an adventure, in a, in a way. A different perception on this. The next thing that I'd like to do is think about how we might shift from an old way of looking at negotiation to a new way. Because if, if we pulled out a book that was written in the 80s or 90s, maybe a sales book, a book about negotiation, it would have a very different look, tone, approach than if we picked up a book today, such as the book that I just talked about, Enlightened Negotiation. I did a great deal of research before I came into this and before we, we started preparing and planning for this conversation today. And I was actually trying to find a, some differing opinions out there around negotiation. But everything I found talked about empathy, talked about connection, 
talked about finding those multifaceted wins. That when we come into negotiation, it's not just about that competition of me and you, but it's about how can we come together to make greater things happen. So I want to look at shifting, the shift. I want us to make that shift together today from an outmoded way of looking at negotiation to what we can currently do to make great things happen. And as I look out at, at this room and at all of you, I can tell you want to make great things happen. I was just having conversations at our table today about the aging and, and what this, this lovely person, person MJ is doing. Um, and, and making things happen, greater things happen. One of the tools that we use to get there is negotiation. So I want you to walk away with an enhanced view and enhanced ability to make these great things happen. So let's talk about the shift, and I want you to make it with me. So the outmoded way, let's read through those and think about the outmoded way and see if you're holding on to any of these outmoded ideas around negotiation. So first of all, we're constructing those barriers. I've got to protect myself, it's me against them. I'm building up my defenses before I even walk in, and then when I get in there, I'm, I'm keeping those barriers up. Hiding real intentions, keeping it close to the breast. Beverly talked about this. So I'm, I'm hiding some stuff, I've got to keep some stuff in here, and I don't want to reveal that. Don't want to put that out on the table. Competitive mindset. Again, going back to that it's either me or it's them, and it's going to be me. So having that competitive mindset. Grasping for control. There's a bit of desperation sometimes when we're, when we're at the negotiation table. I've got to get the control first and win out. So that grasping for control. Using dominant tone and body language. So you might have even heard people talk about when you're at the negotiation table, you want to go in strong. You want to lean in and let them know what has to happen here. So having that dominance in your tone, your vocal tone and your body language. Let's talk about the shift. So shifting into a more collaborative approach to negotiation, a more evolved conscious way of negotiating. Forging connections. And this can happen before we even walk into the conversation, into the room. So forging those connections, gaining understanding and maybe empathy for those with whom we are negotiating. Uncovering interests, getting curious about what are their interests, what do they want, what do they care about, what drives them. And having that understanding gives you more power to make those great things happen. It gives you more insight. Creative mindset. So instead of walking in with a competitive mindset, walking in with a creative mindset. Now, by the way, I'm not saying or suggesting that in certain situations in negotiation, we don't need to assert ourselves to make things happen. We don't need to be strong. We don't need to be the one who pushes out first. I'm not saying that at all, but I'm saying let's first see if we can find those connections because we're probably going to come up with more creative and more innovative and therefore more uh, beneficial ideas that can drive us forward. Another thing to think about is looking for solutions. And we're going to talk about some specific ways of doing that today. How do I look for solutions and some creative solutions? The other thing is using receptive body language and vocal tone. So a little bit of science here in this. So as they've studied people in situations such as negotiation, when we are using that left side there, when we're using that dominant tone and that assertive tone, a voice and our approach to it in body language, we are kicking in and triggering our stress response. So the fight or flight comes in when we're in that mode. And therefore, we're kicking in and we're activating our stress hormones, so cortisol and adrenaline. And what we found is that we lower our cognitive performance when those stress hormones are activated. And therefore, we're probably missing out on some of that cognitive ability to come up with creative, innovative, new ideas, opening up to possibilities. And I don't know if, if you would agree with me, but I think the world is becoming more and more complex. Am I right? I mean, does it feel like that to you? So problems, so some laughter, I hope, of good laughter. Um, so yes, absolutely. It, it's, it's, more, it's more complex to make things happen. We have to weave our way through things that are very complex now. And in that way, we need more creative ideas. 
We need to be creative. We need to be thinking in an open, innovative way, out of the box. Hasn't been done before. OK, there doesn't seem to be a way to come together on this. What else can we do? What else can we open up to? And if we're on the defense, if we're running on our cortisol and adrenaline and we're constantly putting those barriers up, we're probably not open to these creative, interesting ideas that never existed before. So this is one way that we can think of moving in that shift. One more thought on perception here, and, and, and here's just a visual way of looking at this. So visually, that outmoded way, we're putting up those barriers. There's a defense. There is a divide between us and other. And therefore, the ideas are not flowing. The possibilities are not as open as it would be if we had those barriers broken down. New way of thinking about it. So we're actually supporting each other. We're collaborating to reach higher ground, to get to the top of the mountain. So thinking about it visually here, some things that we can do to overcome those defenses and those barriers to support and collaborate as we negotiate with others to make great things happen. I want one more piece of awareness for you is to think about what might be holding you back. So if you find yourself negotiating, and at times more often than you'd wish, you're not getting the result that you would like to get. So what perhaps are those barriers for you? And I'd like for you to think about it and maybe identify what might be a barrier. And some of what Beverly talked about earlier might bring to mind some thoughts on this. Here's some possibilities. So limiting beliefs. I, we talked a lot before we came here, but I didn't cheat off of her PowerPoint. But <laughs> great minds, right, Beverly? We did talk a lot before we got here today. Limiting, limiting beliefs about you and the possible outcomes. Are you limiting yourself? Usually when we're negotiating, it's not just us that's going to benefit from a good outcome, a good agreement. You've got many people depending on that. So if you think about that, we don't want to limit our outcomes by our own mental limitations. So moving beyond those, so thinking about breaking through those barriers. Lack of preparation. I mean, we're all busy. We're all certainly very busy people. So how do we, <laughs> how do we move beyond that and transcend that? Failure to understand our stakeholders. And we're going to talk about some ways of doing that today. The stakeholders, the others, the other in the room. Self-awareness is absolutely essential, but other awareness is as well. What do they need? What do they care about? What do they dream about? What are they concerned or, or fearful about? The other thing, tension in your body or voice. So I want you to just for a moment, you can jot this down uh, on the page there as well. What might be, and this is just a, a, a kind of a, a, a hint for you or something that you're, you're pretty sure might be a possible barrier for you. What might be a barrier for you for getting consistently uh, positive results with negotiations? So jot that down. Take a moment to do that. What is your potential barrier? Could be one of these. Could be something else that you know of. So just giving you a moment to jot that down. In the pace of the world today, what I've come to find out in the clients, the coaching clients that I work with, and also those managers, leaders, and individual contributors that I work with as I do training sessions, but, but also in the coaching. What I've found is that the pace is so fast, and we're so overwhelmed that many times we move through important moments unconsciously. Am I right? We're not thinking ahead of time. We're not thinking strategically before we walk into that important moment, that important conversation that we will have to live with the results of for probably months and maybe even years, and others will have to uh, have that result as well. But we're walking into it unconsciously. We're not thinking about it ahead of time. I'm busy. I don't have time. The meeting's you know, in 45 minutes. I still have to make this other phone call. I've got to answer some emails. And then you know, I've got to get this done. And then I'm going to walk in. And I'll figure it out. Fly by the seat of my pants. I'll figure it out when I get in there. And for some situations, absolutely. But are any of the actors still here, the, the actresses that were still here? In improvisation, 
you know, one of the secrets of improvisation is having a great structure. So if you've ever watched Whose Line Is It Anyway or gone to maybe the improv club, it's not just about getting up there and letting it fly. The reason why great improvisation works is because you have a strong structure around it. There's a strong structured game, and then we play within that. So thinking about ahead of time, being conscious and strategic before you walk into the room to negotiate. The other thing is while I'm in it, when I'm in that moment of negotiation, my colleague Therese talks about free information, that people are constantly giving you free information about what they're thinking, about who they are, about what they care about, in their word, their tone of voice, their body language. If we're unconsciously moving through something, we're not picking up on any of that. And doesn't it matter? Shouldn't it be that we are doing everything we can before and during to get the best possible result? So being conscious. So here's what I'd like to offer you. And this is a, a three-part approach or process for planning for and moving through negotiation consciously, but also streamlining your approach so you're not thinking about too many things, you're just focusing in on the key things you need to think about for negotiation. So let's take a look at this approach. And this is on your handout. So if you'll take a look at your handout, you'll see this model or this diagram there in the middle of that page. Top of the page says pinnacle group, so you can find that. So here are the three parts to this. Higher purpose, stakeholder needs, and physical presence. What we are doing actively is aligning with all three. So we are creating alignment. We are becoming aligned with a higher purpose related to this negotiation opportunity. We are also aligning with stakeholder needs before and during. And then the other thing is that we are aligning with physical presence. And by that, I mean the actual physical presence of the space where we're working, where we're negotiating, our own physical presence and having awareness and consciousness about that, but also the other person having consciousness and awareness about that. So we're consciously moving through it and we've streamlined those key things we need to be thinking about. So let's break this down one piece at a time and you're going to have some opportunity to work on this as we move through this together. So the first one is aligning with higher purpose. So let's think about the mode the general tone that we want to be in as we move through this and as we align with higher purpose related to our negotiation opportunity. We're open, we're creative, we're clear about what we want, what they want, what's happening and what's important. And we're optimistic. Have you ever been in a situation, a negotiation situation where you felt pessimistic? Anybody? <laughs> yeah. Many of us have, and I think what we sometimes have to do, we have to manufacture that optimism. We have to dig deep, we have to find that optimism because those who are depending on us require it. I'm hoping that you've identified an opportunity today that, that matters, it's going to matter what the result is. So certainly it requires us to have that optimism, even in the face of some potential downfalls or pitfalls. So here are the actions that we can take to have that higher purpose, to align with higher purpose. First, rise above to see the common ground. Rise above the noise, rise above the fears, rise above the gales. Come up and out of that and see the common ground. What do we have in common? Us and those with whom I'm negotiating. And I want to find that before I walk into the room. This is a foundational element. The next thing, look for innovative options on the horizon. So this is where that creativity comes in. So I'm looking for those innovative options. What haven't we tried before? What's new? What's different? What will break through to a new day to make this thing happen? Third, creatively collaborate to drive toward mutual fulfillment. If I can find that mutual fulfillment, if we can find that mutual fulfillment, there's energy underneath that. We have momentum to make this thing happen. So finding that mutual commitment and that mutual fulfillment. So this is a way of aligning. These are some actions we can take to align with that higher purpose. And I, I want to bring in a, an example here. I was reading recently about an acquisition that was taking place. 
So we had one company buying another company. Lots of acquisitions. Anybody been through an acquisition recently in one way or the other? All right. It's happening a lot. And uh, I have my colleagues, Carrie and Emily, who are in the back. And we have so many clients that, we, that we, we've come to really love and, and know very well. And many of them are going through either acquiring, being acquired. There's a lot of acquisitions going on. So it's a part of our world of change. And what, I love, what we love to do with our clients is help them see the opportunities in that. But I was reading this article about acquisitions. I was thinking about acquisitions, but I was also thinking about this conversation today. And in this situation, you had the, the company that was buying, the buyer, and then you had the company that was being purchased, so the seller. And they were in negotiations, and the one thing that the seller wanted, they wanted to have the open land around their building maintained. That was just something they wanted to have happen. We've got this beautiful open land that's around our building where this company is, and we want to make sure that that's maintained when the buyer takes over. And so they were in conversation, but the buyer really wanted to use that land to build the building out to make more space for what they wanted to do with it. And so they, they were kind of at a, a stalemate. They were really sort of uh, you know, at, 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 at ends on this, and they weren't coming together. They weren't finding that agreement. So the, the seller invited the buyer, the owner of the selling company, invited the owner of the buyer company to go for a walk because there was a trail that went around the building. So they went for a walk, and in that walk, they talked about the benefits of the open land, the selling company owner, the benefits of the open land, not only just for morale and for the beauty of it, but also there were some financial benefits of having open land around their building. So they talked about that. And they also had the opportunity to talk about some creative use of space, ways that you could redistribute and use the space within the building so you didn't have to build the building out. By the time they finished their walk and they came back, they were able to hammer out an idea, an agreement, an informal agreement about how to move forward, keeping both of their ideas intact. But it was a way of, of, of creating, literally and figuratively, that common ground. What do we have in common? And let's see where we can meet. And let's think outside. So if we think about our own situation, think about the opportunity that you have, I'd love for you to think about that common ground piece. And we get creative here. What is that common ground? Maybe you're negotiating a situation that seems hopeless to some degree. But there's got to be, I'm telling you, every single time there's a common ground. There's something that you'll have in common. So if you will turn the page over and move to the back of that handout, it's a two-sided piece here. Flip it over to the other side of that, looks like this. And at the top of the page, it's asking you to jot down, to write down the common ground. So thinking about your negotiation situation, what is the common ground? What do you both care about? So I'll give you a moment to jot that down. It's at the top of that page, the back of the handout. So just a moment to write that down. The common ground, what is it? It's there, I promise you. Some of you are still writing, but I'm wondering if anybody would share, because I think it, it helps us if we can hear what other people are thinking and what they've come up with. It might help us in our own situation. So who would be willing to share a common ground? Yes, right here. Yes, if you would just maybe stand up and speak loudly so we can really hear you. Sorry, I'm, I'm forcing you to present. Clear your throat. Ah, those are beautiful ones. So you're finding that you and that, that party with whom you're negotiating, you both have that in common, and you know this. You know this. So there's your foundation to build everything else on. Can we get one more? Another person who has found their common ground in negotiation situation. Who else? One more. Anybody? Anybody? Don't all jump up at once. Thank you. Yes. I, I think sometimes you have to step back. Yep. Yeah. And then somehow something just drops off, the animosity drops off, and then you have a, a common ground. Mm. 
So it comes back from that backing off and that perspective. Thank you so much. And yes, sometimes you do. You do need to step back and get that perspective that we talked about earlier. All right, great. So this is that higher purpose piece, aligning with higher purpose. We align with it before we align with it during. And that's part of our conversation and negotiation is finding that common ground. I don't think we can build much uh, beyond that if we can't find that. I think that's the first thing you find. All right, so let's take a look at the next one. And this is around aligning with stakeholder needs. It's important to go through the world being highly aware of other, and it is no more important than in the situation of negotiation. So here are some things we can do. The mode, the general approach that we're going to take is curiosity. So being curious, connected, empathetic, and aware. So as we move through negotiation, we're thinking about it ahead of time, we are in that moment we can have these elements in order to be highly aligned with our stakeholders, with all the stakeholders. The other thing to think about here is one of the stakeholders is you. So we need to also have that heightened awareness about ourselves. So curiosity, this is a powerful thing. I could probably talk for an hour just about curiosity. But this is a great way if you can build and evoke and develop curiosity about the other people involved. This is going to be a powerful motivator. It builds momentum. If we just get curious about what do they care about, what do they want, what do they need, curiosity can really move us through and help us to understand stakeholders. Here are some actions that we can take. We can consciously survey the landscape of all parties. And again, when I say all parties, this is including you. You need to know what you are about in a negotiation situation. So here's what we're needing. The WNEs, which are the wants, needs, and expectations, and the BATNAs, you probably heard if you've done any study on a negotiation, you know these terms. BATNA is best alternative to a negotiated agreement. So let's talk a little bit about these before moving further. The wants, needs, and expectations. This is a powerful thing to know. This is like your currency as you move into a negotiation situation. If you understand that about yourself, and the other party or parties involved, you're already halfway there. What do we want, what do we need, and what are our expectations? I can't tell you how many times we have worked with organizations and leaders of organizations, and we're called in at Pinnacle Group to, to support moving forward more effectively. There's maybe a problem. So often, it's because expectations were not clear or they weren't communicated at all. And there were a bunch of assumptions about what the other person thinks or what they need or what they want. We just assume that their expectations are the same as ours. In negotiation, that's a dangerous place to be. We want to be clear. We want to understand what the wants, needs, and expectations. Sometimes we might have to do a little research to get there. But what do they want? What do they need? Which is, this is the deal breaker. If they don't get that, we might as well walk away. What is the need here? And what are the expectations? And making sure that those are aligned well. It's about that alignment. If you can get that, you've got great footing for everything else. And then the other thing is the best alternatives to a negotiated agreement. So with that, we're thinking creatively again. Here's the agreement that we're driving toward. But let's go ahead and think ahead of time of what, what some of those alternatives could be. What are some of those alternatives that we can turn to? If I can't drive it forward, if we can't work together to get to that agreement that I'm hoping we'll get to, what are those best alternatives to that? And let's have that ahead of time. You've got that in my pocket here to bring it forward. So that when we get into the negotiation table, we have that as an option. Thinking creatively. Again, this is going through it consciously. I'm not. I'm not just hoping these things come to mind as I'm in the negotiation situation. I have it ahead of time. So the WNEs and the BATNAs, got to have those. Leveraging mirror neurons. And this is, again, bringing some science in, in here. But more and more, what scientists are finding is that we have these things called mirror neurons. And I find this topic fascinating. Neurons in general, fascinating. Is it just me? Am I the only one? Anybody else like neurons? Right? It's cool, right? Because they're finding that we not only have neurons in our head, by the way, 
right? We've got them in our heart, we've got them in our gut, neurons, interesting, right? So when we're thinking about mirror neurons, what this is saying is that we have a response to other people and we start to mirror them. This comes in when you're in a conversation with somebody and they shift here and you find yourself shifting here too. Like, how did that happen? Or you cross your arms and then, and like, wow, that just, I mean, now they're crossing their, am I crossing my arms because they were crossing their arms first? And you don't know. Or yawning, they yawn, I start to yawn. Grimacing. Have you ever done this, like try, like, like do like the, the serious look? And then you notice that the other person does a serious look too. <laughs> really, you should try that. Try it today at some point. Like you're talking and then just go into your serious, mm, and they'll go, yeah, I see what you're saying. So the mirror neurons, what we can do is we can leverage this in negotiation situations. So if you're in that conversation, it's getting tense. The other person is starting to recoil. They're closing in. Their defenses are up. They've got a serious face, and maybe it's, it's looking stern. They've got their serious look on. You consciously take a deep breath, go to that inner part of you, find that place where you're not here, and consciously open up your body language. Open it up. They don't need to know you're doing this, but you're consciously doing it. Shifting that open to an openness. You're going to get more done if you're open. Staying open, relaxing that facial expression, shifting your body down so that you're more relaxed. And the hope is, is that their mirror neurons will start to kick in and they will become more relaxed. You're going to get better results if you can do this. So let's leverage them. Let's leverage the mirror neurons and how we are built anyway. Might as well make use of it. The other idea here, another action that we can take or an approach that we can take is about convergence, divergence, and convergence. So think of a, a diamond shape. So we're in the negotiation. The first thing we need to do is set that objective and have that agreement about here's where we're going. Maybe I talk about the common ground. Here's what our objective is today in our negotiation conversation. Then we have that divergence where we spread wide. This is where we come up with creative ideas, possibilities, alternatives. We get creative, we go wide. And then we come back into convergence again. And that's where we come to that agreement. We take all those beautiful possibilities and we find the best option. So this is that diamond shape. So if you can think about that in your head as you're moving through the negotiation, this will help you get to that. In a, in a powerful way, and you'll have a better outcome, most likely. So a, a, an example of this I'd like to give is I had a, a coaching client recently, and she was about to have this really important conversation with her boss. And so we used our coaching event, our coaching session, around her preparation for that. Background about her boss is that this individual, her boss, is someone who likes to hear themselves talk, but not real keen on having you talk. Not really about listening to that. And it's also a person who's always at a fast pace. Okay, great, we're finished here, we're good. All right, good, I'm moving on. <laughs> so this is what she was dealing with, and in this conversation, she really needed to relay some information and to make sure that a decision went in a certain way and not another way, because it really mattered to her and her whole team really important for her, this conversation. So she goes into this conversation, and we talked about some of these things. What happened was is she started to talk about what she needed to talk about, and her boss started shifting in his chair and actually started pointing his toes toward the door. It's like, I think we're good, I'm moving on. And in that moment, what she did was beautiful. I mean, she, by the way, she got best coaching client of the month that month because this was so brilliant what she did. She had planned ahead of time a question for him. What she did first was she matched his anticipatory energy. She matched his up energy and she said, hey, let me ask you this question. So, hmm. So this caught his attention. He shifted back toward her and settled in a little bit. Oh, she's going to ask me a question. Give me a chance to talk. 
So she asked her beautifully crafted, ahead of time thought of, conscious question, and he started to answer it. And in his answering, he started to make the points that she wanted to make herself, in a way. He got to the conclusion that she wanted him to get to because of how she crafted the question. Brilliant, right? And so the, what happened is, in that conversation, she, after he finished his bit, she knew she had to be short. Attention span was short there. So she wrapped it up, made her point, talked about the steps forward, and got what she wanted. Beautiful. Really beautiful. So it all happened, though, because she was conscious in the moment and because she found some common ground. The person wanted to talk about themselves. And she asked that question to get there. And she shifted her energy down and open to make that happen. So a lot can be done with those stakeholders, keeping them in mind, making sure that we're answering their needs. OK. So let's move on to physical presence. And this is where that particular exercise will come in handy. That particular example will come in handy as well. So physical presence. So this is a huge one. And I want us to think about this in a way that that really making it useful for you that you can go out and, and practice it. So here's the mode for this, this physical presence idea. Pres we're being present, fully present, centered, receptive, and vibrant. So this is the mode if we're going to have this physical presence alive and well. Some actions that we can take. Create an environment that encourages connection for that situation. Dare to be vibrantly still and present as you are in that moment. Lots of power in that. Lots can be created from that. And be receptive through your body and your voice, being receptive. So here are some things that we can do. This is what we can do in that physical presence moment. Here's my own. Now, this, this I didn't find from a researcher or a scientist. This is my own idea here, or my own way of interpreting it. So for whatever that, uh, that, that is for you. But I believe when we are in a heightened situation, I've seen this over and over again with coaching clients and with others. When we are in a heightened situation, such as negotiation, we start to leave our body, in a way. <laughs> or at least our energy shifts up. So we're shallow breathing we're in that moment. And we've got to get our point across, but it's not going well. It's not going well at all. And we're up here, and uh, we're in our heads, and everything's spinning. And we're sort of up here, right? And it's hard to really get good results or be confident or assert yourself or really think clearly when you're up here. <laughs> so what we need to do is shift it down. And this is a conscious thing. And I want you to try this right now. So sitting in your chair, put down whatever you have in your hand. And sit in a way that you're lifted a little bit. You're not slumpy, like your mother says. Sit up straight. So you're sitting up nice and straight. And I want you for a moment to shift your energy up. So go up in your head, and maybe thinking about the negotiation situation that you're thinking about today, your opportunity, up in your head. Get your, your energy and your, your breathing, maybe some tension up in your shoulders, and you're up here. All right, so up here. OK, we're all up here. This is not a good place to stay, so let's get out of this. So dropping your energy down, I want you to literally think about your energy going down into what is called your center, so like that lower region of your body. So just take a deep breath. Deep breath, let it all go. Close your eyes if you need to, and shift it down to here. Oh, okay. Much better. Yes? So this is where it's a bit esoteric, and we have to work with this a little bit. It's a bit hard to grasp, but if you can work with that and bring that energy down and shift it down, much stronger place to be. If you find yourself in a negotiation situation or any other situation, and you're about to leave your body, you're all up here. Oh. Take just consciously, they don't need to know you're doing it. They're still talking about themselves. You have that moment, <laughs> let them go on and on. And you take that moment, take a deep breath, and literally think about maybe a ball of energy, whatever works for you, but think about that coming down to here. I went to school for acting for, well, I, don't, I can't even count, probably six years, I think, altogether, from undergrad to graduate school. 
And the first year literally was about what they called centering or grant, find your center. Any actors in the room? Anybody studying acting? Anybody in there? Right? So it's about finding your center. This is where your strength comes from. So you want to have this. You want to be here before you walk in. You're using your heart. You're using your head. But we're centered from here. We're moving from here. And we have that strength from here. So I want you to use that. All right, so here's what I'd like for you to do. On the back of that page, again, I want you to move through and get into those wants, needs, and expectations. See if you can identify those. And then the last thing to do is to look at creating that environment. What can you do to create an environment that is going to be receptive and open? So those last two pieces there, I invite you to jot down some thoughts around this. This is about being conscious for your negotiation situation. What are those wants, needs, and expectations? If you really think about it, you can probably identify those. And then what is that way of creating an environment that is going to be open and receptive? So take a few moments to plan that out. OK. So hopefully you've had a chance to think that through. Again, being conscious, streamlining your, your approach to it, streamlining your preparation and your delivery, but being conscious about it. And here's what I'd like to do for just a couple of minutes here. I'd like to give you a moment to just share with a partner, find one person next to you to share a little bit about your situation, so abbreviate that a little bit about the situation where you're going to be negotiating, and then one of the aspects of your plan. It could be about the wants, needs, or expectations. It could be about the environment. Could it be about that common ground? But share with them a little bit about your situation, and then one aspect, one piece, one component of your plan. And then what I'd love is if you could get a little bit of coaching from your partner, just to say, hey, I've tried this, or that's a great idea. However, have you thought about this? So we're only going to take five minutes on this. If you can find one person to partner with, beautiful, because you'll have more time with two people. But if you need to be a, a three-person uh, party there, that's fine too. But we're only going to take about five minutes on this. So taking turns, taking turns on this, sharing a little bit and getting some feedback and some coaching. All right. All right, thank you for supporting each other. Well done. Good work. Hopefully you got some good pointers and support and coaching from your partner or partners. So well done. Well done, everybody. Thank you so much for your participation in that. Some final thoughts on this are, are really around the the collaborative approach and what the benefits are of having a collaborative approach to negotiation. First of all, it advances both parties and, and, and what they are looking to accomplish and their goals. It leverages all of the resources that we have and our time and our energy is used well as we collaborate together to make things happen. It ignites a synergy that expands relationships and in increases those relationships and expands them. And the possibilities that we have to make things happen. And it makes life, I believe, more meaningful, more fulfilling, and more interesting if we are collaborating and negotiating in this way. I'm hoping that the opportunity that you've identified, you feel a little closer to it, that you're a little more prepared to be conscious around it as you prepare further and as you move through that negotiation conversation. I, I'm hoping you feel a little more equipped for that. You gain support from the ideas and from each other. And you have great things to make happen. So I encourage you to get out there, use this tool and the other tools that you'll be gaining today to make these things happen because the world needs it. And, and be conscious as you move through it. Thank you so much for your time. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody.